With a life full of controversies and struggles, Nikola Tesla remains one of the most mystical and dramatic figures in engineering and stands apart for the sheer scale of his contribution to science. The groundbreaking theories put forth by him are revolutionary, to say the least. Tesla had a dream ahead of his time of powering the world wirelessly with free electricity. He was obsessed with this idea and spent a significant span of his life working around it. His unusual vision might have scratched the surface of comprehending the power of something much more ancient, something that was built thousands of years ago. What was his secret to free energy that we perhaps failed to see? Are we missing out on something incredible? Welcome to Crunch, and today's video is about a secret of the Great Pyramid that Tesla tried to tell us about a century ago. What Tesla Deciphered About the Great Pyramids Tesla's long-held ambition was to produce an infinite source of clean energy that was available to all. He adamantly opposed monopolistic coal-fired power plants that emitted carbon dioxide into the air we inhaled. Tesla suggested a theory for limitless and wireless energy worldwide. His lofty goal was to liberate humanity from the burdens of extracting, pumping, transporting and burning fossil fuels, which he considered a sinful waste. This multidisciplinary genius was quoted, The day science begins to study non-physical phenomena, it will make more progress in one decade than in all the previous centuries of its existence. Tesla's Wardenclyffe design evolved from his research in the early 1890s. In these trials, his major goal was to create a new wireless power transfer technology. Tesla developed his own thoughts on how a global wireless system might work, first in laboratory work and then large-scale testing at Colorado Springs in 1899. Based on his experiments, he speculated that if he injected an electric current into the Earth at just the right frequency, he could harness what he believed was the planet's own electrical charge. He suspected the pyramids had the ability to convey electricity wirelessly, due to their shape and location, which inspired his experimental Wardenclyffe Tower and plans for generators that could theoretically utilize the Earth's ionosphere as a medium to conduct energy. The locations were chosen according to the laws of where the pyramids of Giza were built, which related to the relationship between the elliptical orbit of the planet and the equator. But was he correct? It is difficult to explain why the pyramids were built and the speculation has spawned many odd and quirky theories. The largest of the Great Pyramid of Giza is widely believed to be the tomb of Pharaoh Khufu, also known as Cheops. But, well, surprisingly, the corridors and chambers of the Great Pyramid do not contain any of the things a conventional Egyptian tomb would contain, such as extravagant artifacts or wall art. And so, experts are still trying to unravel the mystery of the Great Pyramid. Meanwhile, Tesla was certain that pyramids were giant transmitters of energy, a thought that coincided with his investigation into how to send energy wirelessly. So, did the pyramid altogether serve as a different purpose than what has been believed for years now? Were pyramids the powerhouse? If we look at the materials that were used to build the Great Pyramid, most of it is nummalitic limestone, found close to the site itself. But the inside of the pyramid is made up of dolomite limestone and granite. Why? Perhaps it is because both of those materials can conduct electromagnetic waves quite effectively. The interior chambers were built of pink granite mined in Aswan and have a high concentration of quartz. Quartz crystals are used in many of the devices we use today, not to mention they possess piezoelectric property, which is the ability to generate electric potential when subjected to mechanical stress. It is recently found that the pyramid was once covered in casing stones of bright white limestone that lacked magnesium and would make an excellent insulator. Theoretically, this entire setup as a whole seems to be somewhat like a power conductor with a rubber casing. But how could it be possible that the ancient Egyptians were capable of such advanced technology? Documenting 20 years of research, Christopher Dunn published his book, The Giza Power Plant, Technologies of Ancient Egypt. And according to him, the process started in the subterranean chamber with aquifers below them that create sound waves with the movement of water beneath. These sound waves, he believes, resonated with the Earth's natural vibration. And as they move up through the pyramid, they would magnify and convert sound to energy. The Queen's chamber was the place where supposedly hydrogen was created. 
as it has two shafts with traces of hydrochloric acid in one and hydrated zinc chloride in the other. Combining these two creates a volatile reaction, leading to the generation of an ample amount of hydrogen. This hydrogen would flow through the Grand Gallery, which is also made up of granite, and as the gas builds up, the application of pressure on this granite would create electricity. This electricity would also ionize the air, making it more conductive. The Grand Gallery, according to Dunn, also contained resonators that would vibrate and emit sound, further exciting the stone to create more electricity, also making the gallery resonate at 440 Hz, emitting an F-sharp chord. Coincidentally, from little that we know, this is a sound that resonates in harmony with the Earth. The top of the gallery has a shaft leading to the King's Chamber, above which are five layers of granite beams separated by air gaps with three smooth sides and a rough cut on the top, as they were chipped to resonate with the F-sharp chord, more like a Helmsholtz resonator. After all this, the pyramids wore a golden capstone that helped release the power generated towards the ionosphere. Wardenclyffe Tower, or Tesla Tower, which stood 187 feet tall, highly reflected Tesla's obsession with the Great Pyramid. Tesla's tower was also believed to have been built upon aquifers, which means Tesla used the same electric technology applied in the construction of the Great Pyramid, if at all it had one. The tower was anchored more than 300 feet into the ground. In the ground below, there were said to be tunnels and an iron root system that went deep into the earth. Another resemblance to shafts and chambers under the pyramid? While many myths and traditions surrounded the Egyptian pyramids, experts have little scientifically accurate understanding of their physical qualities. Recently, physicists became interested in how the Great Pyramid would interact with electromagnetic waves of resonant length. Calculations revealed that the pyramid can concentrate electromagnetic energy in its internal chambers, as well as under its base, where the third incomplete chamber is located when in its resonant state. These conclusions were derived on the basis of numerical modeling and physics analytical approaches. The number aids in estimating how much incident wave energy the pyramid can scatter or absorb under resonance situation. Finally, the scientists measured the electromagnetic field distribution inside the pyramid under similar conditions. The Great Pyramid attracted researchers while they were studying the interaction between light and dielectric nanoparticles. The scattering of light by nanoparticles depends on their size, shape and refractive index of the source material. By varying these parameters, it is possible to determine the resonance scattering regimes and use them to develop devices for controlling light at the nanoscale. But is this study enough to state that the pyramids themselves were a power plant? The question still remains unsolved, fact or fiction. If Egyptian technology was so advanced, could it be the case that this technology was somewhere lost and rediscovered centuries later? Probably, but the question here we need to ask is not if it is possible, rather whether a specific technology actually was rediscovered. How do we know? Even if we just bring up Tesla's experimental tower to demonstrate that wireless electricity is possible, we would still be no closer to knowing whether these so-called Egyptian power plants actually worked. Of course, there is nothing resembling a Tesla coil in the Great Pyramid, or as a matter of fact, any of the other pyramids. There are no dielectric pools or coil forms, no connecting points to fixed metal components, no corrosion evidence, no tiny models, blueprints or written explanations. Thousands of pounds of copper or other metals which would be necessary were also not there. So, as of now, more fingers are pointing towards it being a fringe theory as no evidence gives 100% assurance of the Great Pyramid being used as a powerhouse. The current mainstream explanation for the purpose of the Great Pyramid does not adequately explain why the Giza Pyramid should not be considered an ancient power plant, but we should never underestimate what future discoveries would unveil. Thanks for watching Crunch. Don't forget to comment your favorite part below.